Welcome to this week's video. Somebody had asked me to do something about AI art programs, particularly Mid Journey, which is the one I mainly use. I've got a paid for subscription to that one. I find it the best. I do use others like Stable Diffusion sometimes and Dale sometimes, but, I, but this is about Mid Journey because this is how I get my images. What do I use my images for? I'll talk you through that. I use them mainly for book covers in a 11-18 in a aspect ratio, so a, a, a portrait aspect ratio, and I use them for YouTube thumbnails on a 16-9 aspect ratio, so a landscape ratio. In this, I look at how I generate my images, I look at prompts, I look at waiting prompts, I look at whether you get a better result by getting ChatGPT to create a prompt for you. I look at um, Midjourney's very useful describe function, so you could get a, an image that you like off the internet and get Midjourney to describe it, and it will create a prompt that you can then use. Not guaranteed to be identical, though. And that's one thing that you'll see, that there is an element of chaos, either a technical chaos whereby you, you allow it by setting a chaos number to vary from your prompt. But even if you don't specify a big chaos number, you have this, the standard, you will find that there's no guarantee that the same prompt will um, generate the same thing. So we have, um, Im that is describe, we have imagine, which is the basic way you um, generate images and then you can vary them, you can upscale them. And then we have blend, whereby you can put two images together. And we've got also one where you copy a link and you use an image as part of your prompt. So it will take into account the image you put in and any additional details you put in. Anyway, look at the video, see what you think. This is the board of all my jobs on my mid-journey on Discord. Some of these obviously I like and use, and some of them are attempts, because I think the thing you need to appreciate about mid-journey is you don't get what you want first of all. It's not like if you're going to sit and draw it yourself, if you have that skill whereby you draw what's in your mind. You put a prompt in, and uh, you it's potluck what you get, and in some cases you don't get what you want. So. All of these here that you can see now are for me doing A plus content for uh, Amazon. You know, when you do a, publish a book on Amazon KDP, you have the option of doing A plus content, which is adding additional and attractive features below your book description. And so I was trying to generate some some of those for my story, The Poisoned Rose, which is set in a manor house in Yorkshire in England in the winter and it concerns an alchemist, uh, and it's a it's a sinister story, really. So just so as you can see the kind of prompts, because we need to talk a little bit about prompts, but first of all, my purpose in doing this is just to show you what I've got. So look at this, alchemy, sinister, threatening, eerie, scary, laboratory, alchemist, red rose. Now, it doesn't look like I've specified. Um, it, it, look at the detail of those roses, that's lovely. And then there's some kind of alchemy thing, more electrical stuff going on, but it's still quite nice. I did some variations of these because you can see, looking out of the mullioned window, linked to the falling snow in the rose garden in the quadrangle below, as you can see, some of them are nice but are not what I want. Um, I used, I think I used that one because it has the, let's get, let me get it up for you. Let's get her up. So it, it, you see, it's very sharp. It's like uh, almost photorealistic, but it's clearly not a photo. Uh, it's mysterious. There's this silhouette of a woman. That's what I wanted, really. I mean, who knows if this is good stuff? The diagrammatical, uh, diagrammatic drawing floor plan. I'm going to show you some resources about different styles. Is more an illustration in the manner of William Morris. I don't think William Morris did much that looked like that. This looks like. Um, there's an American artist whose name escapes me now, who, will, who I always forget, uh, and it will come back to me. And these were um, YouTube thumbnails. So I basically use Midjourney for YouTube thumbnails and book covers, and clearly I do more. And A-plus content, which is landscape as well. It's um, an aspect ratio of 16 to 9. So this was for a YouTube video I did 
called um, the it's a it's a narration of a story not my own story by J. Sheridan Le Fanu called a, an account of strange some strange occurrences on Anger Street in Dublin so you can see I, I put that in an, a haunted Georgian house in an old Dublin street at night with a baleful risen moon done in the style of Atkinson Grimshaw it says who was a Victorian artist who um, specialised in moonlit scenes this stuff is done in stained glass style you can see the difference and it's meant to be dreamy and that's for my another podcast i do called late night sleep radio you can see what i've got so i use it extensively these were other attempts at the poisoned rose trying to get something that i liked and so you can see these ones are done stained glass stained glass and then i get to this one which is paper quilling and you can see how different that looks if i bring it up that's paper quilling. Looks like it's supposed to be done out of quilled paper, obviously. Uh, paper quilling. And then I, was, I did a science fiction story as well. And this one was for a story I'm writing. And if you saw me do the, a video on Pseudorite, I was starting to write... It wasn't on Pseudorite, sorry. It was me writing a horror story set on a German moor. And this... If you look at this, this is uh, photorealistic. Pretty good, isn't it? Except, what are these things down his face? Scratches of some kind. And I didn't ask for another person to be in it, but I thought it was relatively sinister, so I kept it. Uh, and then, these are done in the style of um, lino cuts. So they're black and white. So I'm going to talk about some things, uh, different things I use. No text prompt. Dreamy starry night with barn owl flying. Some of these are nice. I think that's my favourite. So these are all, okay, you can see the 1118 ratio, which is for book covers and portraits. So I use 16.9 for YouTube thumbnails and, and I use 1118 for book covers. And that's really pretty much all I use it for. But I still think it's well worthwhile. You can see here, some of these are absolutely lovely, aren't they? Look at, look at that. Look at that, how lovely that is. And this is mid-journey. And it is awesome and then we get more like a victorian illustration this is me still looking for the poisoned rose picture one lesson about ai art is you can probably this, these are dwarves i think and these are this for a fantasy story i think this was to illustrate a video um on um youtube about about writing fantasy scenes there's a photorealistic elven princess uh so look look at the quality of her hair it is amazing, it is amazing, and these are obviously attempts at horror. I wasn't totally loving those, and but the capability that it has, I think this is, um, I did this as, uh, look, look, look at it, and you, so we'll come on to the style. So the, the methods that I use, and we'll switch to Midjourney, this is the website Midjourney, you can see midjourney.com, I want now to switch to Midjourney, the the Discord bot, and I'll tell you a little bit about how that works, and I'll I'll go through a few of them for you. I I'm still playing around. Um, I I actually got this prompt from ChatGPT, and I asked it to write me a prompt for from a little seed idea, and it comes up with this very intricate stuff, uh, but I didn't really, I didn't totally love any of these. And, and of course, it gives you four options. Uh, well, we'll go through it. So that's the first thing. You can see my four alchemists, my four alchemical roses, my four diagrammatic drawings, uh, uh, my four castles in the style of. So what we'll do now is we'll start with the basics. And the first one you want to do is imagine. So you imagine the basic prompt that I use is I might put, um, what am I doing now? So, okay, English mama's play set in a village street. Sinister animal masks. Photorealistic. Call it 8K. Hyper real. And we want a um, an aspect ratio, so it's a dash dash for aspect ratio 16 colon 9 because I wanted landscape. And this is to see what we get from a basic prompt. I pay for this and I do think it's worth it because you can see the use I make of it and the quality of it. So it's given us four options as you see and they're all relatively grim. 
uh, I actually really like them. So we'll we'll do a close up to see which ones we like. They're all fantastic, actually. Uh, I, I want them all. So the next thing you do is you can upscale one, two, three, and four, and you can make some variations of one of them. So we'll just pick four to vary, and it, we can then change this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the aspect ratio. If you if you change a a landscape to a portrait and vice versa, it, it does something funny, it squeezes it, but I'll just show you what it is. And then I'll also do one without changing the aspect ratio. So horrific, let's see, you know, you don't have to, you don't have to do anything there. Aren't those grim? They're fantastic though. And the quality is not quite a photograph, but you can see there's the bokeh there, you can see these are in focus and then at the back they've got a, um, and it looks like it's a Christmas scene. Done, we've done um, upscale of these. We've actually, I added a word here, horrific, and I varied one of them. And as you see with the word horrific, they become more, they become more horror masks rather than animal masks. They've become more dreadful, really. Uh, I, I like this fellow here. He's just appeared. So who knows what these are? And then I said, if you change the aspect, so I've gone to an 1118, which is a, a portrait aspect, it squeezes it, but it hasn't. And I, I'm just going to upscale, I think, that one of these monstrous rabbits. Now, we're going we're gonna to play with this uh, prompt. So we've got this. This is the base prompt. And what we're going to do now is we're going to keep um, a, uh, an 1118 aspect ratio, but I'm going to add some chaos in it because um, C, well, we might as well, you can, you can actually do chaos or C. If we, if we do 50 chaos, it will feel free to vary more. The lower the chaos, the more true it will keep to your prompt. These are actually really splendid, I think. These are just the kind of things I'm looking for. I forgot to type the prompt in, so you've got to put Imagine Chaos 50, waiting to start. You wouldn't like to see these guys walking down the street. So let's see when it's got a, um, a, a higher chaos number, what we get. So with a higher chaos, you see it's felt free to uh, move away so mummers plural they still are they're all plural but it's it's changed it hasn't it you know there there's lots to say about this now let's keep on with this one but later on i want to show you blend and i want to show you describe um because these are really useful as well so let us go now and and to do waiting so we're going to do an imagine and what you see is what we've got is We've got the subject, and then we've got, we say something about the vibe, the atmosphere, and we've got technical in, in two bits, really. First of all, there's a technical for the, the photograph itself or the image itself, and you've got the, the, the technicalities in aspect ratio and chaos. Now, I want to reduce the chaos, so I'm just going to do it to normal. No, let's not change too much. So one of the things you can do is weight them and you break the prompt into different parts of two semicolons. So sinister animal masks. And then you can weight them. So um, we might say English mummers play set in the village streets. So we might say that's actually two things as well. And also it has a natural tendency to to privilege the thing that comes first. So the first thing, the first thing you say is the most important. But you can change that by changing the weight. So you break the prompt with uh, two sets of colons and then you add a weight to it. So I'll do five for this. That's quite a high weight. I want this as a three. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm saying the village street is only a one. Uh, and we'll leave the rest of it the same. So as you see, it's no longer in a village street. Uh, still animal masks. So we've still got those because that's a three. The village street is a one, so that's disappeared. It's still a mummer's play. Let me try a different weighting. So it's we're going to do, we'll just copy and paste it, just do it the same. 
everything's the same. That's S is stylized, so it's a st it will add a stylization. You can set it higher or lower, but I'm happy with it as it stands. Right, so what we're going to do is we're going to change this to a 1, change this to a 5, change this to a 2, and see if it alters the weight and the balance of emphasis that the engine gives to creating the image. So what we see here, yeah, it's on a street. Now, it's definitely, they're all on a street. That was the most important thing there. It's not necessarily a mummer's play, though. Um, who knows? I mean, it maybe doesn't even know what that is. Let us change now the style. So I, I, I like uh, lino cuts. This is weird, a lino cut. So let's take all that photorealistic stuff out. And we'll put black and white lino cut. So it's, we're changing the style. That's a tech, it, is, it is the style command, yeah. So this is now supposed to be a lino cut, not a photograph, but it's still a photograph. I wonder what will happen if I change it again to comic book illustration. Saturated colors. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to change the style from lino cut, which it went black and white, white. It went black and white certainly, but it didn't do much with the. It still looks like a photograph. So let's try and actually shift it heavily over to comic book illustration. Remember, we've got no weight there, and I'm, that's my next thing I'm going to do. That's still a photograph, isn't it? Uh, that might be, that's maybe an illustration, but it's still photo, photo real. So it's almost like it remembers from previous prompts. Like, uh, of course, ChatGBT does that. It remembers what you've recently put in in a chat. I'm just going to leave everything the same, apart from I'm going to give this a weight now to see if it makes a difference. I'll give it five. Very David Lynch, to be honest, with all those rabbits and Venetian masks. I would say, however, it did obey the saturated colours because if you look at these, the colours are, are pretty saturated. This now is looking more like an illustration. You see how it slowly comes out. It does its 78%. Um, uh, and actually, the last 95 to 100 can, can really change it. So this is, in fact, looking like an illustration now. Yep, those are now comic book illustrations, and that was achieved by increasing the weight um, and I guess I could have actually split it up even further and done comic book illustration five saturated colors one Let's do that. Why not? So what I'm going to do imagine cut and paste Same aspect ratio. It's the only technical detail I'm going to give So I'm going to make it Am I gonna have it in a village street? No, we're gonna what we're gonna do is we're gonna simply what we're gonna do is we're gonna change Make that a four now, I'm actually going to tone the colours down a bit, just to see. Go. I think the colours are still saturated. Um, and I'll tell you one thing I've done. See that gap there between the... Uh, that means probably means that hasn't worked. Um, let's change tack. Let's go to one of these big ones we did at the beginning. Yeah, that one. What I'm going to do is, you can see all these things, you can vary this, you can vary subtle. These these are make less less extreme variations than the original four. It's just a different way of doing it. You can zoom in and zoom out. That's useful if you want to focus on something. I'm not going to do that now. I actually like that, so I'm going to give it a thanks. One interest, interesting thing, I'm going to go to the web. So when you get your four and you enlarge one, that will give you the possibility of the web link. And this takes you to the midjourney.com server and you can see it in good detail there it's pretty good but i'll tell you another really useful thing is explore related now these i didn't do these i didn't do these they're somebody else's but what is useful about them is you can then maybe get closer to what you imagined so these are grampuses krampuses aren't they but you know let's say actually that is more, that one there is more what I thought. And I didn't do that. 
Paulina did that. Lots of different looking grotesque humans are like Irish folk, folk tales. So you see, you can actually go, once you've enlarged your creation, if it's not exactly, but it's close to what you want, you can go on the web and you can look for other people's and you can take their prompt and see what you get. You might say macabre and atmospheric and grotesque should be before, but I'm not sure that Mid Journey cares apart from this belief that we have that what it does is it uh, prioritizes what you put first and gives uh, gives gives privilege to that. So this is similar to her stuff, but you know, just because you put the identical prompt in doesn't mean that you get the identical um, subject. Although they are pretty good, I, I quite like those. Um, and these are mine because uh, you know I used her prompt, but it's generated on my thing. They are freaky, aren't they? Um, okay, right. Next thing. I wanted to do uh, two other useful things that you can do. So the first thing we're going to do is describe. I'm going to send the barn owl up again. If I can find it this time. So obviously, yeah, the the um, the describe function has the upload. And we'll send that up. And this is going to describe that. And it gives three descriptions, four descriptions. Owl wallpaper art, Harry Potter by the great wizard Owl wallpaper, style of abstract, the style of an artist. We haven't even got into that yet. We can do that next time. He reckons the aspect ratio is actually 9151. Uh, an owl with wings spread against it in a style of colourful drawings, light UHD image, free brushwork, HD flowing light. This is its description. Let's try this. So what I'm going to do is, from this description, I'm going to now... You can see, imagine all, you can actually make versions of it with all of those. I'm just going to do one and see what it comes up. You, so you can imagine them all and create images from those four descriptions. But let's see, I'm just going to do that one there just so you see how that goes. So you basically upload an image, any image that can be any image off the internet or that you've drawn yourself. It will describe it and it will generate a prompt that you can then use yourself. You see the prompt is our wallpaper. OB, HD background, I don't know what OB means. Background for desktop images, backgrounds and wallpapers in the style of graffiti-inspired illustrations like gold and dark amber, multi-layered realism. Quite different though, isn't it? So here we've got it. It's quite different. What I'm going to do, I'm going to do something else. I'm going to copy the link to this. Copy link. And when you do your imagine, you can use an image, any image, along with a prompt. So what I might say is photo shoot, wildlife shot, have a nice long lens, 75 millimeter lens, um, bokeh, because I want a blurred background. So I put my F stop as, well, no, that's too much. Three, I'm, I'm never certain about the things. I know there's F 1.2, so I only vaguely understand this stuff, but I know when you have a, a smaller F number, you have a, 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 a shallower depth of field, so um, you'll focus on your subject and you will have a blurred background. But if you make it too small, sometimes only part of your subject, so you say you do a portrait and you do an F1.2, their nose might be in focus and the rest of their face isn't. So we want to be careful with that. And we'll say uh, Canon cameras. I don't know what difference that makes. I could have said um, Nikon or something like that or Sony. But let's see. So basically, I've inputted that image, which is a gold foil type image, which is an illustration. And I've actually said shoot it like a camera, a wildlife shot, photo shoot as well. So we'll see what that comes up with. This is where you use an image as part of your prompt. You're using an image prompt. As it emerges, this is a great lesson to us all, to me particularly. It isn't as clever as you and me. You know that I meant as if shot by a Canon camera, but it sees Canon camera and it actually puts it in the shot. So we end up with this bizarre picture of an owl blended with a camera and in one case some kind of uh, leopard and it's come out as it looks like a photo um, but obviously it's not uh, so that's really interesting there's no waiting in that one remember uh, we can see it's it's done the bokeh with the blurred background so it's done the the um, the f-stop but it's combined those and that is a lesson to me I'm going to do another one now this is blend and this, these, you do these in pursuit of what you've got in your mind. 
And, and one lesson I would say is sometimes you can't get exactly what, it, what you've got in your mind. We're going to blend some pictures. Okay, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to blend this street with one of those horror guys and upload it then as a blend. So we'll do that. So now I've got this. So you see, I'm blending these two. I've got a kind of illustration of a, of a moonlit street and some horrible blokes. So that's all I'm going to do. I'm not going to put any other um, commands in. I think you can, but I'm just going to see what happens. It'd be interesting to see whether it outputs it as square because I haven't um, specified an aspect ratio. Both the inputs were landscape, but if I don't specify, it won't output it as landscape. You have to specify or it comes out as square. It doesn't keep preserve the inputs, but you remember there was the, the, the illustration of the street and those figures, and it has blended them into some kind of utterly nightmarish thing, really. Um, I think the emphasis has been more on the figure. No, no, actually, the composition of the street leading away has um, done it, and it's come up with some strange artefacts there. Of those, they're all fairly weird. I actually like these two, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to upscale and upscale. We've done upscaling before. We see this odd and disturbing, and we see this really quite disturbing let's open in uh let's go to the web and we'll see if anybody else has ever done anything like that so there's ours explore related so there are some similar but not very plague doctors and kind of victorian street scenes if we look at the prompts for those words i say 19 haunted foggy street scenes a style of richly detailed backgrounds dark and brooding and this is an embodiment of the black plague as plague doctors uh, and then, bizarrely, I, I street scene with geese. So what it says, ultra-realistic, fluffy, oneric, that means dreamlike, and surreal polar bears, flamingos, dinosaurs, turtles walking in an ancient poor thing. But it's actually done a photorealistic picture of some geese on a kind of peasant street. I wonder what on earth that is. Uh, and there's a flamingo as well. So that's kind of weird. When I started thinking of this, I was going to do everything today and I realised I haven't got time. But uh, there are loads of different things you can do. We haven't even talked about styles either. Like we've done a little bit on liner cut stained glass. We've mentioned them stained glass uh, comic book illustration. But there's loads of different uh, styles and there's lots of different resources to help you with that. That's the first aspect of style. The second is to copy an, uh, an illustrator or a painter, their style as well, and do something. In, and both of those are really worth doing. Uh, so far, we just messed around. And you can do a lot more with the prompting now. There is a belief that, uh, I'm going to do uh, ChatGPT4, there is a belief that the more extensive the prompt, the better result you get. So we've seen what we got from a pretty uh, simple prompt, which was this. But I'm going to ask ChatGPT to craft me a, 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 a the optimum prompt, prompt for uh, mid-journey AI art. So create the optimum prompt for an AI art engine such as mid-journey to generate an image based on the following. English Mummers play set in the village streets. As you know, we've been doing that. So let's see what it comes up with. ChatGPT4, remember, the better engine. So it's it's add, added a lot of detail. The street is lined with rustic buildings, their windows dimly lit. So we're back in mid-journey. We've just generated the long prompt. We're going to do an imagine. Imagine, and we're going to just cut and paste all the stuff we got from... Oh, uh, ChatGPT, much more wordy, uh, lots of more detail, and we see if it generates a better image. So let's have a look at that. We've done a wordy prompt, and the first thing is, although it says 16-9 aspect ratio in the text, it's been completely ignored, and it's outputted a square, and that's the reason if you want it 16-9, you have to put dash dash AR 16 um, colon 9. It just ignores it in text, okay, number one. Second thing is, Yes, it's it's photorealistic. Let's have a look at it up close. I'm actually not sure it's any better than the original. You know, the original simple prompt, which was what we did before, I, I don't think it's any better. So maybe that whole idea of uh, doing super du duper detailed prompt prompts is a waste of time. You just need your basics. I incline to that. Uh, but, you know, prompters seem to think you need to put lots of stuff in. 
Um, so in there were lots of things we can do and we can look at. We can look at other engines such as Dale. We can look at uh, stable uh, stable diffusion, and there are other ones come on the market as well. Firefly um, actually signed up to Adobe Firefly. Of them all, I still use um, Mid Journey because I think it's the best. I think you get the most startlingly wonderful images compared with the rest. I use it for, as I said, thumbnails and book covers, and it it amazes me. I guess you could also use them for visualization of characters. And when we talked about plotting out stories, we might want to get thumbnails of the characters, and we could put a, a description um, in there. So that would be another use. Let's just do that now. So uh, I've got a I've got a story. So so basically, middle aged, eccentric professor in England in the 1940s so that's what the subject and we're giving a little bit of detail where he is let's prompt wait it and that's going to be four that's where we are so portrait formal portrait three 1940s photo we'll call it because a 1940s photo is different from a 1920s photo is different from a from a polaroid photo from the 1970s 1940s photograph studio shot and we'll see what comes out. I'm not going to aspect ratio it, so I'm just happy for it to be square. I don't want to put too much more in. Oh, we've got to weight that as well, haven't we? So that, that's important that it's a studio shot, so I'm going to give it a five. Interestingly, that it's a photograph studio shot is more important than the subject, a middle-aged eccentric professor. I'm going to weight that as well. Uh, he, he is the most important. Let's see what happens. Well, there's, uh, there's my grandfather. No, um, they actually look across between a photograph and a highly detailed illustration, don't they? Eccentric professor has put all this stuff in the background. 1940s, we get the hats. There's a lot of 1940s stuff there. Uh, he could be earlier with his collar. He could be 20s, 30s. But this would certainly do as a character, a character image for you to put into your plotter or your story plan and help you visualize your characters as, you, as you're drawing up. So it's, so those are the three uses, there are four uses really. One is for character visualization, the other is for um, book covers, um, which you would then need to work up on something like Canva or another program of your choice. You could use the portrait also as internal illustrations for your book, and I've certainly done that. I did a fantasy one, so I had pictures of lizard men and orcs and all sorts. And you, they were done at this level of detail. They were really great. And uh, thumbnails if you're going to do YouTube videos. There we are. How about that? Well, what happened with that was I started off thinking I could cover everything about AI art because basically I just use it for very basic things. I use it for illustrations for my books, internal portrait illustrations for some of them. I use it for cover generation and I work it up usually on Canva. Sometimes I need to do a bit of Photoshop first, but mainly I don't. And I use it for YouTube thumbnails, again, which I usually develop on Canva uh, to use on. So I only use it for very basic things. And I only use it as a kind of a journeyman. I'm no expert in it, as you see. But even that filled the video. And there was lots of things I was going to talk about in the style of, we talk about that, and other engines such as Stable Diffusion, for example. But we'll have to save those for another video because I think probably giving you enough to digest. And I am open for tips. I get lots of information back in the comments section of the YouTube channel. So please do comment and, and correct me where I'm wrong and teach me and instruct me because I'm always grateful for that.